Hey guys, welcome back to our JavaScript. We are going to continue building the application, look into some more query and also caching a bit later in the video. So let's get started by moving some of the components around. So I'm just going to move my button into the components directory and update my imports for button. Okay, so this updated my import in the login component. Hit save. Cool, things are working. And now let's just style this sidebar a bit. Before that, I'm going to create an avatar component. So I'll just say avatar.js and I have some styles that I'm going to paste in. Cool. Now we will use this avatar component in the sidebar. So I'm just going to sidebar and import the avatar here. So import avatar from dot slash avatar. And now I'll just change this image to be avatar instead. Hit save. Cool. Uh, so things are coming into place. Uh, let's also style this logout button. So I'll just go and pull up the styles for my logout button. And I'm just going to paste that here. And I'll just change this button to a div. Cool. Now we'll have to import the style components macro so that we can use the CSS prop. So import style component slash macro. Hit save. And our style should be working. Now let's look into the caching. So for that, I'm just going to go into my app directory and here let's just duplicate this sidebar. So I'm just going to make another sidebar, hit save. And we should have two sidebars here rendering beside each other. And now let's pull up the network tabs. So I'm just going to go into my networks tab and filter out the requests using XHR and now let's refresh. Cool. So we can see that only one request went to the GraphQL API. This is the request and if you look into the response, we are getting the all the data that we requested in the component. So this is our sidebar component and it ran the query of the viewer against the avatar URL and the login. So we're getting that here. And only one of the requests went despite having two sidebars. This is because Apollo is intelligent enough to figure out which request to send and which to avoid due to caching. So even if we have multiple sidebars, let's say we have three sidebars and I'm just going to hit refresh and clear up this logs and I can see again only one request is going and all the other components despite having individual uh, query components they are able to fetch the data from the Apollo cache. So let's look into what Apollo cache actually is. So Apollo client comes with zero configuration caching so you get to use the caching mechanism even without much setup so we, we have set up caching over here in our app.js which is here over here in the cache we are providing an in-memory cache which will tell Apollo to first look into the memory and if it doesn't find anything in the memory it will do a network call to fetch that information. You can go over the Apollo caching docs over here to get a bit more idea on how caching is working internally. We'll be using some of the mechanisms related to caching in our mutation video and there are some more advanced documentation which you can find in the Apollo GraphQL docs itself. You'll find all the links in the description so you can go through them. Let's also look into how Apollo is internally managing the cache so we can get a better idea of about how things are working here. Apollo makes use of the underscore underscore type name field and the ID property to normalize all the information available and store that into the cache. So later if another query is fired with request for the same information, it knows what it can use to give that information back into the component. To make use of this uh, caching, uh, we can just go into the sidebar component and over here also request for the ID attribute. Cool. 
Now I'll just go into my Chrome browser because the Apollo extension we are using only works in Chrome right now. So you can just go over here, go to the Apollo extension and over here we can come to the cache property. So now we can see that this is a root and this is the viewer object and it's storing all the information and the key here is the u is user colon the id that was requested so this way it has normalized all the information available so later when another query is fired say for a different sidebar component it can uh, fetch this information from the cache directly instead of making a network call you can customize this behavior and we'll talk into some more advanced use cases coming on to the series thanks for watching and please subscribe and stay tuned for the next one. Take care.